So you all know the feeling. You're sitting around at home, very happy. But then, suddenly, you feel a stomach ache coming. Your stomach's growling and it hurts a lot. So what do you do? You might choose to take some medication. So you open your mouth wide and you pop in a pill to wait it out. But what's actually happening as you swallow that pill? How does that drug get to where it's needed? How do we describe mathematically how the drug moves throughout the body? Well, that's where models can come into handy. So when you eat the pill orally, that is an extravascular administration route. That means that it's not IV. So first that drug is going to be in your gut, in your stomach, in your intestines, and it's going to be digested maybe. But then, in order to get to where it's needed, it's got to move inside the body, right? Your body has to absorb the drug from the gut. So, you have an absorbing arrow, described by the rate constant, Ka. There's some rate associated with moving from the drug in the gut to the drug in the body. Now, after it's in your body and it does its job, your body has to eliminate the drug in some way too, right? So we also have an eliminated drug compartment, DE, and that is also described by another rate constant called KE, the rate of elimination, and that constant is called KE. Now we have three compartments, right? We have DG, DB, and DE, and we have two rate constants, KA and KE. We can now write a system of equations, a system of differential equations, to describe how all of these work. So first we look at how the drug in the gut, DG, changes with time. And that's just negative Ka times DG because you have a rate constant that describes how it moves from the gut to the body and it's negative because you're removing from DG and you're putting it into DB. Next up we have the change of DB over time and that is just Ka DG which is positive because you're putting drug into the body from the gut and you also have a negative Ke dB because you're taking out drug from the body and you're eliminating it through this rate constant Ke. That's why it's a negative. Lastly, we have the change of DE over time and that's just positive Ke times dB because as you're eliminating the drug, you're putting more drug into the DE space. Now, in order to solve this system of equations, we first look at this very first one. Very easy, we can just move around some variables, divide both sides by negative Ka dg, and then also multiply both sides by dt, and you get this form here. Next, we can finally integrate with respect to dg and with respect to time. We have to choose our limits of integration very carefully because that will impact the later results. So here we're integrating from d0, which is our initial drug dose, to dg. Here dg means the current drug in the gut, the current amount of drug in the gut. On the time side, we have integration from time t equals 0 to the current time t. Negative 1 over Ka is a constant on the left hand side, so we can just move that out. And now we can easily integrate. So we can integrate 1 over dg, and that gives us ln, the natural log of dg. And taking our limits of integration into account, we get ln dg minus ln d0. And on the right hand side, it's just very simply t. We can multiply both sides by negative Ka, and following our natural log rules, we can divide dg over d0 because we have a negative sign here. Lastly, we can raise both sides to an exponential and multiply both sides by d0 to finally get an expression to describe how the drug in the gut changes over time given these two parameters, d0 and ka. So that's great. Now we can substitute this very first equation with what we got. Now notice here, in our second equation, we have a dg right over here. 
What does that mean? We can simply plug in our first equation into here. So we get this result there. I did nothing more than substitute dg. And now it's time to solve this equation here. Because the ultimate goal, remember, is to figure out how much drug is in the body over time. We can get rid of that last compartment because we want to figure out how dB changes over time. So we rewrite the equation here. And now I'm going to do a little bit of fancy math. The fancy L you see there is called a Laplace transform. And you can do a Laplace transform on both sides. And this will help us with solving this differential equation. Now the Laplace transform is a linear function, which means that because you have two terms here, you can separate that out into two Laplace transform terms, like so. Again, because the Laplace transform is a linear function, you can take these constants and bring them out to the front of the Laplace transform, giving us this expression here. Similarly, for Ke, you can also move Ke out to the front because it's a constant. Now, for the left-hand side, we can modify it so that we can change our the Laplace transform of the differential into something more manageable. So there is a property that when you take the Laplace transform of a function with respect to time, then you can come out with some dummy variable, I'll just call it s, times the Laplace transform of the original function minus the Laplace minus the, the function value at time t equals zero. However, at time t equals zero, we have no drug in our body. That's why it's a minus zero here. Everything else stayed the same. Very easily, we just move this last term to the left-hand side so that we can factor it out. And on the right-hand side, we can actually evaluate the Laplace transform of this exponential term. You can look up any Laplace transform table, and it will tell you that the Laplace transform of e to the negative constant t is 1 over s plus that constant, which is what we have here. We can divide both sides by this s plus ke term to finally get an expression for the Laplace transform of db. So now our goal is to somehow figure out what this is. So I just rewrote the equation here. And now, I'm going to do some manipulating. It's just a lot of algebra. So I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by this expression here, Ka minus Ke, top and bottom. And now we can factor out the Ka d0 and the Ka minus Ke. Take a moment to, fig to look that, to see that these two are indeed the same. And now we can do some partial fraction decomposition. So changing this term into 1 over s plus ke minus 1 over s plus ka. Notice how these two are actually the same exact expression because you can multiply this by s plus ka, multiply this by s plus ke, the s's cancel out, and you're left with ka minus ke. Moving on, I'm going to take the inverse Laplace transform to both sides, and that will get rid of this Laplace transform on the left-hand side, leaving us with just dB. So the inverse Laplace transform of this entire thing is what we're going to be solving. Again, the inverse Laplace transform is also a linear function, so we can take that constant term here and just move it out. And these two terms we can also separate out into two separate inverse Laplace transforms. Now, as we just saw before earlier, the Laplace transform of an exponential function looks a lot similarly, looks very similar to this expression here. So what you can do is just take the inverse Laplace transform of these values and turn them into exponentials. And there we have it. This is our expression that we can use to describe the how much drug is in the body over time.
Now, what we can now do is divide both sides by the volume of distribution. And when you divide by a volume, what you're really doing is turning the left-hand side into a concentration because the amount of drug divided by a volume is simply the concentration of that drug in the body. Now, of course, this equation here is assuming that every single molecule of drug you ate was absorbed. This, this equation here is assuming 100% bioavailability. So we want to include an F term here to describe the fraction of the drug that actually is absorbed. And there you have it. This is the equation that we can use to describe how the drug evolves over some period of time inside the body. Alright, so what I did was I took our handy dandy equation and I put it into a handy dandy software called Desmos. Desmos is this graphing tool and you can see this beautiful curve that this equation produces. On the y-axis we have C, concentration of the drug in the body, and on the x-axis we have T, for time. Now in this case we only want to know values for T that is greater than zero because the negative side doesn't really make much sense. But we can see that we can change these parameters, right? If we increase F, if we increase the fraction of the drug that's absorbed, obviously the curve is going to go up because you're getting more and more drug into the body, right? Similarly, decreasing F will make it go down. That's very intuitive. The same effect goes for D0. The more drug you eat initially, the, the more drug will, will be in your body. But the less drug you eat, the less drug will be in your body. Very simple. Now for volume, if I decrease the volume, you're going to start increasing the concentration because that's how concentrations work, right? V is in the denominator. As you increase V, your concentration goes down. Ka and Ke, these two are the interesting ones. Ka, as you increase your absorbing rate constant, what you're doing is you're going to be shifting that curve more and more to the left, right? You're making that initial absorbing rate a lot higher. See that? Similarly, if you decrease Ka, you're going to spread out the curve some more. You're going to spread it out like that because you're going to decrease that initial absorbing rate constant. Now, you can predict this for yourself. If you increase Ke, you're going to get rid of the drug a lot faster, right? Which means that you're going to start seeing the curve go more and more down and more to the left. It's kind of sagging a little bit. And on the left, if we decrease Ke, you can see that we are decreasing the elimination rate and we're making that concentration go way, way up, right? So I'm going to include a link of this in the description so you can play around with it for yourself. But that's all I have for you today, so thanks for watching.